Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Uh, today we will talk about relative motion of one object relative to another object. Um, in uh, all the cases we will be talking about uniform motion, which means that velocity is a constant vector and acceleration is equal to zero. Now this lecture is um, part of the course of Physics 14's presented on Unisor.com. Uh, together with the video lecture, the site contains numerous notes. Actually, every lecture has notes. It has also exams for those people who are uh, willing to challenge themselves. Um, uh, the site is completely free, no advertisement. Um, also, on this site, you can find the course called Math 14, which is definitely a prerequisite to Physics 14. You really have to know math, especially. Uh, vectors and uh, calculus. All right, so let's talk about relative motion. So we are talking about motion of one object relative to another. So let's consider that first of all we have certain original frame of reference. Let's say for our purposes it's the frame of reference which is fixed on the ground and we consider this frame of reference to be inertial. Now we have two objects. We have object, let's say, A and object B. And they are moving with uniform velocity. So there is some kind of a vector here and vector there. Now, what we are interested in is motion of one object relative to another, let's say B relative to A. Now, for this purpose, we are considering another um, system of coordinate, which, is, which, which has a, um, an origin where my A object is located, let's say at time t is equal to zero, and then this frame of reference is moving with axes parallel to original, um, let's say, the ground-related uh, frame of reference, initial um, inertial uh, frame of reference. So it's moving towards the vector um, of speed, vector of velocity actually, uh, of this particular object. So this uh, frame of reference is always related to the moving object A. Now, obviously at any moment of time position of A is described by some kind of function, vector function of uh, of the time. That's the position of object A, this is index A. And the position of uh, object B, so this is this vector, and this is this vector. This is PB of T, and this is PA of T. So PB is position of the B object. Now, obviously, these are vectors which are changing, and that's why I have a T parameter here. Now, the first derivative of these are velocity vectors, and velocity vectors, we have agreed, are constant, the uniform motion of both of them, right? So, this particular derivative is equal to VA, and I do not put uh, dependency on time because it's a constant vector and this is VB also a constant vector. Now what do we know uh, from the vector algebra? If I will take the vector from A to B now A as you remember is an origin of the new system of coordinates new frame of reference which is moving with A with axes parallel to the original frame so, let's call this vector PAB. 
and this is obviously again dependent on t on the time so this is vector from a to b and now knowing the uh, the rules of addition of vectors I can say that vector from p uh, from from uh, original um, system 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 point to a plus the vector from a to b is equal to the vector from the origin to to b right so I can always say that p a of t plus p a b of t is equal to p of b of t so to get to the point b from the origin of the original system I can always go to a and from a to b that's what basically it says it's a simple vector arithmetic now if I will differentiate the, this thing I will get v a plus v a b is equal to vb now this is a constant and this is a constant that's why this is also supposed to be a constant so the vector which connects from a to b as a position if I will take the first derivative of this vector it will be a constant velocity of b now let's just think about it relative to what I mean obviously um, position uh, vector from A to B is basically position of object B in the system of coordinate related to uh, point A moving with A and correspondingly um, this equation with the speed this is actually a speed or rather velocity vector of object B relative to object A and these are exactly what we want to find out we want to find out what's the location of B in the system of coordinate related with associated with object with moving object A right so this is exactly how we can find out so from the first one we can see that PAB is always equal to PB minus PA and these are all functions of time and the velocity is correspondingly difference between velocities so let's just concentrate on this and this this is actually the reflection of Galileo's uh, relativity principle now the uh, this relativity relativity principle basically tells us how to calculate relative speed of one object relative to another well in this particular case we are talking about uniform motion and most problems which we will be um, uh, dealing with uh, probably will be of that kind in kinematics so that gives you basically the, the tools um, how to calculate uh, relative position if you know absolute positions and uh, speeds or velocities rather and vice versa if you know for instance one of them and relative to another then we can find the original so this is basically the uh, the the meaning of the Galileo's um, relative motion uh, principle now what's interesting is in Einstein's theory of relativity this type of addition or subtraction of velocities is not exactly the same I mean there is certain uh, nuance which actually is related to shortening of the distance and the time as the speed is increasing etc we are not talking about this I'm just telling you that this is a classical approach which goes back to Newton um, now it doesn't mean that this is wrong no to a certain degree of precision this is absolutely correct but if you go into the um, speeds which are well relatively comparable to the speed of light 
and the precision of your instruments is really very very high you will see that this is not exactly um, uh, the, the law of nature and the law of nature has certain um, uh, I, I would say corrections very small corrections mind you but nevertheless they are so this is um, the Galileo's relativity principle. Now, let's just apply this particular principle. Let me put this on the top and I will apply it to a few practical problems. So, let me put it again. V uh, A plus V a b is equal to v b or v a b is equal to v b minus v a these are our uh, laws of adding the velocities and this is the vectors obviously all now the first problem is very easy and uh, i i think it's like a must problem for anybody who is studying kinematics. You have two trains going, let's say, in opposite direction along parallel straight line rails. One, let's say, goes to uh, with a speed of 100 kilometers per hour to the opposite direction 90 kilometers per hour. Now, what does it mean? What did I not say and I assume? Well, I assume that there is a system of coordinates related to the ground and assumed to be inertial system and these are speeds um, relative to this particular system of uh, coordinates now obviously it's very convenient to choose this system of coordinates in such a way that this is my x-axis let's say the direction is towards this train which goes with 100 kilometers per hour but the line the x-axis actually is coinciding with the lines of uh, the motion of the train then my y and z coordinates are equal to zero and i'm not going to mention them at all so we are we are very we actually, right now, we are talking about one-dimensional system. Not three-dimensional, but one-dimensional. And this is the dimension. Now, so this is my V A one hundred kilometers per hour. And what's my V B? Well, not exactly ninety. It's minus ninety, right? because the direction is this way, right? So it must be negative, it's against the x increasing. Now, what if I want to know how this particular train moves relative to this one? Now, what's the practical situation? Well, for instance, there is a passenger in this particular train looking at the window and he is basically measuring the speed of the passing train. So what's the speed of this train relative to this passenger? Again, what I did not really say, but I assumed, I assumed that this particular passenger is the origin of a new system of coordinates, new frame of reference, which is moving this way with this speed, and that's why this is VA. And I'm measuring speed of this object, which has absolute um, uh, speed relative to the Earth's 90 kilometers per hour in that direction. But I would like to measure the speed of this thing in the system of coordinates related to this passenger. So what do, I, what do I need? I need to determine VAB. That's what I need to determine. Well, again, it's the difference between... This is B, by the way. It's minus 90, minus 100, it's minus 190 kilometers per hour. Now, first of all, why is it minus? Well, because 
relative to this passenger, this train goes against the x-axis increasing, right? So that's why it's minus. And as far as the 190, again, it's kind of obvious that whenever trains are moving against each other, um, then the speed must actually be combined. The speed of this guy um, uh, approaching this particular, this train approaching this train is the combination of both. So it's kind of intuitively obvious, but I would like it not to be based on the intuition, but based on uh, consideration of the frames of reference. One frame of reference is relative to the Earth, another frame of, relative, uh, uh, of reference is relative to the passenger who rides in this particular train. And both frames of reference are inertial, because this is a uniform motion, right? And that's how you can find out relative speed of this train relative to this one. Now, what if the train goes this way? Well, then the speed will be 90. This arithmetic would be minus 10. Now, why is it minus? Because again, this guy is slower. They are moving towards the same direction, but this guy is slower. This guy is faster, which means this guy will go this way and this will always be behind, right? So, and it goes behind more and more, so it's like increasing this distance in this particular direction, and that's why it's minus. But it's only 10, because in this particular case, the velocities are subtracted, because we are moving in the same direction. One is a little slower, but nevertheless, uh, there is a difference, and since there is a difference, this is. Now, if this guy was faster than this, then it, it's also the difference in absolute value, but the sign would be positive, because relative to this one, this, who moves, let's say, 120 miles, uh, kilometers per hour, then it would be moving uh, relative to this one with the speed only 20. Same thing as you uh, are driving the car, and you're driving the car let's say with 90 kilometers per hour or 60 miles per hour or whatever and then somebody else is moving a little bit faster than you then it moves really forward right but if it moves slower than you it seems to me that this guy relative to you moving backwards right more and more okay next problem next i have a few other examples which basically are exactly the same as far as their meaning is, but nevertheless it's good illustration kind of thing. So, um, one illustration is, let's say we have a platform which is moving at certain speed forward. Let's say uh, three meters per second. Now, on this platform, there is a person who is moving again uh, towards the same direction and, he, and it's, uh, his speed is, let's say, one uh, meter per second. Now, I would like to know how fast this person moves relative to another person who is standing still on the ground. What do I have in this case? Well, again, obviously I presume that the x uh, axis uh, of my original uh, ground-related um, system of coordinate is towards this movement, so this is my x coordinate. Now, my platform would be my A object and the person would be B object. So I know that VA is equal to 3 miles per hour uh, per second, 3 meters per second. Now, whenever I'm saying that the person is moving on the platform with this speed 1 meter per second, it means that this is relative to the platform. 
That's what it means. And from here I can do my absolute um, speed of this particular person relative to my original ground-related uh, system of coordinates uh, as, in this case, sum, right? 3 plus 1, which is 4 uh, meters per second. So again, my first original uh, system of coordinates is related to the Earth, to the ground. Now my moving object A is the platform, and this is another system of coordinates, another frame of reference, and basically I'm moving relative to it. That's why it's VAB is equal to. Now, and uh, the third example would be um, about rivers and boats. Now, let's assume we have a river with straight banks and it goes with certain uh, the flow goes at three miles uh, three meters per second okay that's the flow of river and we are assuming that this is a uniform motion all the water uniformly moves along the straight line um, along the obviously x axis that's our now let's assume we also have a boat now the boat moves in the water it can move in the standing water like in the lake or it can move in the river but in any case whatever we are saying about the speed of the of the boat this speed is relative to the water where it is uh, located so let's say we have a boat and its speed is 10 meters per second in the water now if it moves down the river the flow of river helps the boat because the whole water mass is moving and the boat is moving within that mo within that uh, mass of water with this speed in which case we will have what va is equal to three meters per second and this is relative to the water right so this is vab is equal to 10. So, if you, I would like to know how fast the boat moves relative to the bank of the river, let's say I have two points, A and B, and I would like to know how long it will take to get from A to B. So, I know the distance, but this distance is along the ground, so I have to, I have to calculate everything along the ground. So, obviously, in this case, the speed of the boat relative to the ground VB would be 3 plus 10, which is 13. Now, if my boat moves in this direction, from B to A, obviously I have to subtract. Then, uh, now why do I have to subtract? Well, because my VB, VAB would be negative in this case. So VAB in this case would be negative 10 meters per second. So I still move the water this way, that's 3, and then I have to, instead of plus 10, I have to do minus 10 because the speed is now negative since it's against the um, x uh, growth, and that would be minus 7. Again, minus because the, the boat will, will, will move against the growing of the x coordinate, and seven, and 7 is its absolute value. Okay, basically that's all different uh, uh, problems I would like to use as examples, but the most important is this type of addition or subtraction whenever, so it's uh, either VA plus VAB is equal to VB or VAB is equal to VB minus VA, same thing in both cases. So these are um, a few examples which illustrate this particular thing. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.